Okay, so I thought I would just take you through the process of creating your own cover for your book using Microsoft PowerPoint. This is 2010 version. So what you want to make sure of is that you've resized your slide to the measurements that are needed for a paperback book. And once you've done that, over at the side, you will have that slide showing. So if you go over the edges, then uh, that's fine. And what you can do is I've got grid lines set to on so that I can actually see clearer what what lines up with what and make sure everything's how I want it to be. So and because you can go over the edges on your actual main screen, it's very handy having the bit off to the side that you can see so you can see how it's coming along. So what you do is you can visit dreamstime.com and search for different images and then right click and select copy for the image so that you can after you've made the image a bit larger so that you can test the image out at a low resolution version before you pay for the image because what you don't want to do is pay for an image try it as a book cover and then decide actually I think that looks rubbish I don't like that it's it's not the sort of thing I want and then you've paid for the image and although the images are fairly affordable you don't want to be wasting your money really whereas if you test it first of all with an image that's just copy and pasted that's a lower quality one so you copy it and then you come here and then you go to paste but one of the options that will come up is paste image so you come here and paste image you can test it with the low resolution version and then if you like what the book cover looks like you can then go and buy the uh, higher resolution image if you don't like it you can delete the image and then replace it with something else until you do find something you like if you've got your own image say you're good at photography and you have your own images, or you go to artwork and you have your own images, then you can always obviously use them. So I'm just going to pick an image that I haven't used for a book cover before, that's one I've purchased from Dreams Time. And it shows quite small, but these are high quality images that you get from the site. So I'm just trying to make sure it's the right size. So it covers the whole page. So this is, again, is another reason why I had the grid lines there, is that when the page is completely covered, you can't see the white background. And so if the image is significantly larger than the background, you can't see the white background, so you can't see where the page is. So all you do is decide on what kind of image you want, decide on where you want it to be, how you want it to be. So obviously you can do things like stretching the image as well if you wanted. So you could stretch the image like that, which I don't think looks too bad stretched. Because it was quite a rounded head anyway. So you can stretch an image like that. And obviously this is just all very quick. Insert a text. 
box. So let's think of a title for a book. Um, And you could do subheadings and put the author name. You can create your own custom colors as well. And what I think I'm probably going to do, I don't yet know entirely whether this will work out, is, let me do that first, go to shapes, select shape, just drag it across there, format the shape, Have it black. Let's say 50% transparent. And then send that back. So not all the way back, but just a little bit back. Has that gone all the way back? I think it has. Bring it forwards. Make sure that's at the back. there and place this I centered the text <clears throat> intentionally so that I could line up with the grid lines because I wanted this in the middle I could line up with both end grid lines and then this title would be right in the middle and then you can think you know what text would you like I'm going to click over here to look at the text instead of where you could see it then and then just hover over the first one and then I could press down and so you can see different fonts so then you can go through and think what would be a good font for something about being inside your mind Obviously, it would also depend what type of genre and what actually you're going to be talking about. And so it's much easier to use PowerPoint and do book covers this way In fact, I think there's a font that looks a bit like it's got cogs on. So it's much easier to do a book cover this way than it is to do a book cover using different paint programs because you have far more choice of things you can use. The screen I find is easier to see. And you can always save a master cover kind of program or page so that you can then keep reusing it trying different ideas so you can go through and look at lots of different types of things I think that one sort of looks a little bit it's got some cogs on 
didn't look as good as I thought it would when I got to it in relation to the picture. So let's just say I picked that one then I might decide that actually I want a different color and you've got different effects that you can have So format text effects, let's just move that out the way. So you can format it, trying to have a look, I'm sure there's other You can do shadows and things. That's what I was looking for. So you can do that. So you can make it then so it matches a little bit more with that. And obviously, if I'm the author of this made up book, I can add my name. and perhaps decide to place my name on there in some kind of a handwriting font so that's a handwriting font let's make it a bit larger do it in bold change the color of it
So I could place my name on there. Again, if I want this to be dead central, then just pull that over to both sides and center line it. Then I know that's dead central. Chances are I'm going to want it perhaps over here. So, obviously it's just incredibly rushed, it's a made up book cover, not the most exciting book cover, but it's to show how quick and easy it is to do things like this. And then I can go to slideshow and view it. So then that would sort of be what this specific book cover would look like. So inside your mind with Dan Jones, and then you've got a mind with cogs going around and then on a paperback version I could have the back cover perhaps in black so you've got this and then a black back cover um, obviously in reality I probably wouldn't use this image or make a book cover that looks anything like this <laughs> but from point of view of just showing you with an image that I haven't used before on a book uh, this is something you can do and obviously I could have arranged it in any other kind of order I wanted. I could have had the picture smaller, could have resized it back to where it was. For example, could have shrunk it down. Could have made this black back to being more black with no transparency. Which may look better. So you could do a smaller book cover, sort of more like that. I think there's a line, an outline to this, so I'll just get rid of the outline. So you could have it like that. You can also, as I've made that smaller, I could always raise this up. And then raise that up. Obviously I could change the text. So that's obviously just very quickly created. And then what you do is go to save as and um, test one will do. And you go to save as type and change it from PowerPoint presentation to JPEG or it could be PNG if you wanted, but I normally use JPEG. And then save and then current slide only. And then what it does is it saves it. So if I find test one as an image. So you can then create whatever you want, however you want, and just save it as an image and you've got yourself a book cover.